Did you know that 69% of Americans have less than $1,000 in savings? Now that's a financial horror story. Imagine, a sudden expense pops up, maybe the car breaks down or the roof leaks, and you're left scrambling. That's the reality for a large chunk of the population, it underscores the importance of savings and smart financial planning. It's not just about being rich, it's about being prepared. But don't worry, we've got a roadmap right here to steer you clear of that statistic. First off, you need to know where you're going. That's why setting clear financial goals is step number one. Imagine you're setting off on a road trip. You have your bags packed, snacks ready, and your favorite playlist queued up. But there's a problem, you don't have a destination. Now that would be a pretty aimless journey, wouldn't it? That's what it's like to navigate your financial life without clear goals. It's like driving without a destination. So let's explore the importance of setting financial goals. Setting financial goals isn't just about earning more money or becoming wealthy, it's about identifying what you truly want in life and creating a plan to get there. It's about making purposeful decisions today that set you up for a better tomorrow. Let's consider a real-life example. Meet Jane. Jane is a recent college graduate with a significant amount of student loans, her goal, to pay off her loans in five years. This is a clear, specific, and measurable financial goal. Now, Jane didn't just set this goal and forget about it. She made a plan. She calculated how much she needs to pay each month to reach her goal. She cut back on unnecessary expenses and started working a part-time job on weekends. She set milestones and tracked her progress. Jane's goal wasn't just a wish, it was a plan. Or take John for instance. John has been renting apartments for the past 10 years. Now, he wants to buy a house. He sets a goal to save for a down payment in three years. Again, this is a clear, specific, and measurable goal. John makes a plan, adjusts his spending habits, and starts saving more aggressively. Jane and John's stories illustrate the power of setting clear financial goals. It's not just about the end goal but about the journey, the decisions, and the changes we make along the way. So remember, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Start planning. Let's not embark on this financial journey without a clear destination. Let's set our goals and create our roadmap to financial freedom. Because remember, this journey is not just about the destination, but about the adventure of getting there. Next up, it's time to create a budget. Yes, it might sound boring, but trust me, it's as essential as caffeine on a Monday morning. Creating a budget is like developing a roadmap for your money. It tells every dollar where to go and ensures that you're not left wondering where all your money went at the end of the month. It's about taking control of your finances, rather than letting them control you. Now let's take the example of Sarah. She was living paycheck to paycheck, barely making ends meet. She didn't know where her money was going and was constantly stressed about it, but then, she decided to change her approach. She started by tracking her income and expenses. She noted down every single penny she spent, whether it was on groceries, utilities or those irresistible online sales. After a month she reviewed her spending patterns and was shocked to see how much she was spending on unnecessary things. She realized she could save a significant amount of money by making small changes to her lifestyle. For instance, she decided to limit eating out to once a week, instead of her usual three times. She also started to plan her grocery shopping better, reducing food waste and saving money. Sarah then allocated her income to different categories such as rent, groceries, bills, savings and entertainment. She made sure to save a part of her income every month no matter how small. This budget served as a financial compass, guiding her in making smarter money decisions. Over time Sarah started to see the magic of budgeting. She was not only able to save money, but also had enough to invest and grow her wealth. Most importantly, she felt more in control and less stressed about her finances. So, what's stopping you from creating a budget? Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect from the get-go. Start simple and refine it as you go. It's about understanding your spending habits and making conscious decisions about where your money goes. So, get your coffee ready and start budgeting, it's more fun than it sounds. Moving on to step 3, paying off debt. It's like cleaning your room, you'll feel so much better when it's done. Now let's dive in. Paying off debt is akin to lifting a heavy weight off your shoulders. It's a liberating feeling a sense of freedom that gives you the confidence to stride towards your financial goals. But why you might ask, is paying off debt so crucial? Well for starters, debt is like an anchor. It can slow down your financial progress, and in some cases, even pull you under. Let's consider a real-life example. Meet John, he was a regular guy with a regular job, but he was drowning in credit card debt. The interest was so high, it seemed like he was running on a treadmill, constantly trying to catch up but never really getting anywhere. Then one day, he decided to make a change. 
He started by making a budget, cutting out unnecessary expenses and prioritizing his debt payments. It wasn't easy, but he stuck to it. And guess what? Within a few years, he was debt-free. What changed in John's life, you ask? Well, for one, he was no longer shackled by the constant worry of debt. He had more money to save, to invest, and to spend on things he truly valued. His credit score improved, and he even managed to secure a mortgage for his dream home. But perhaps the biggest change was in John himself. He felt a sense of accomplishment, a newfound confidence. He had taken control of his financial future and that, ladies and gentlemen, is priceless. To sum it up, paying off debt is not just about getting rid of a financial burden. It's about taking control, about freeing yourself to make choices that align with your financial goals. It's about gaining the freedom to invest in your future, to make your money work for you instead of against you. It's about living a life unburdened by financial stress and full of possibilities. Remember, the only good debt is no debt. Step four is all about investing wisely. It's like planting a money tree, but without the magic beans. Now let's dive into the world of investing, where the potential for growth is limitless. Investing might seem daunting, but it's essentially about making your money work for you. It's not about quick riches or gambling on the next big thing. It's about steadily growing your wealth over time. Let's consider a real life example. Meet Jane. Jane is an average person like you and me. She started investing in her mid-twenties. She didn't have a lot to start with, just $100 a month. But she stuck with it, and over the years, she saw her money grow. Jane invested in a diversified portfolio, which included stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. She didn't pick stocks based on tips from friends or the latest buzz on social media. Instead, she did her research, made informed decisions, and remained patient. Fast forward to today, Jane is in her early 50s and has a sizable nest egg. That humble $100 a month compounded over the years has grown into a significant sum. And the best part? Her money has been working for her, even while she sleeps. Investing wisely isn't about timing the market or having insider knowledge. It's about consistency, patience, and understanding your risk tolerance. It's about knowing that there will be ups and downs, but over the long term the trend is generally upward. And remember, it's never too late to start investing. Whether you're in your 20s or your 50s, the best time to plant a money tree was 20 years ago. The second best time? It's today. Investing is a journey, not a destination. It's a process that requires commitment, discipline, and a willingness to learn. But the payoff? It's financial freedom and the ability to live life on your terms. So ditch the magic beans and start investing today. Finally, step five, maintain good credit. It's like having a good reputation, but for your wallet. You see, good credit is the golden key to the financial kingdom. It can unlock lower interest rates on loans, better terms on credit cards, and even help you land that dream apartment or job. Let's take John, for example. A few years back, John's credit score was, well, less than stellar. But he decided to turn things around. He started paying his bills on time, reduced his credit card balances, and stopped applying for new credit. Slowly but surely, his score began to inch upward. Today, John enjoys the benefits of his hard work. He secured a mortgage with a favorable interest rate, and even snagged that apartment with the killer view he always wanted, all because he took steps to improve his credit score. Remember, good credit opens doors, so keep that credit score high. And there you have it, your roadmap to financial freedom. We've journeyed through setting clear financial goals, creating a strategic budget, paying off debt, investing wisely, and maintaining good credit. Each step, crucial in its own way, leading you towards that sweet destination of financial freedom. Remember, every journey starts with a single step. So start stepping today. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more financial wisdom.